Florida is home to a plethora of wildlife. The swamps of South Florida are one of the few places you can find alligators and crocodiles living together in the wild. Large mammals like deer, bears, and even elusive big cats like the Florida panther also call the Sunshine State their home. And since the 1930s, wild monkeys have also been residents in Florida mostly in Silver Springs Park. A lot of people like monkeys, but some of these monkeys carry a virus, which can be deadly when transferred to humans. But how high is the potential risk, and how did the monkeys even get there in the first place? It was once believed and reported that the monkeys were actually leftovers from a film shoot. In a 1971 issue of the New York Times, an article reported that a Hollywood studio making Tarzan movies imported Reese's monkeys from Southeast Asia in an attempt to give the Florida environment a more African look. It is true that multiple Tarzan movies did filming in Silver Springs through the 30s and early 40s, but they didn't bring these monkeys, and the story of the film crew leaving monkeys behind is nothing more than a local rumor. So then, where did they come from? Well, the monkey invasion was actually orchestrated by one man named Colonel Tui. And yes, his first name was actually Colonel, not a rank. He ran a jungle cruise on the river in the 1930s. He wanted to increase the jungle feel of the experience, and decided to bring in some monkeys to do the job. He got them from a primate dealer in New York and planned to create a monkey island along the river. However, what Colonel Tui apparently didn't realize was that Reese's macaque monkeys can swim, and within a few hours of being placed on the island, they swam across the river into the surrounding forest. More monkeys were brought in with the same outcome. Though he had only brought in a handful of monkeys to start, that number would quickly rise. Reese's macaque monkeys have a strong ability to adapt to new environments. They can easily survive on the different plants, insects, and bird eggs that are plentiful in the park. They didn't just survive though, they thrived. Colonel Tui had brought in 12 monkeys in total, but by the 1980s, the 5,000 acre park was home to hundreds of monkeys. By 1984, officials decided it was time to step in. They had 20 females sterilized and authorized the removal of 1,000 monkeys. But what happened to those 1,000 monkeys that were removed? Were they put down? Sent to a zoo or a wildlife park? Or... Reese's monkeys share about 93% of their genes with humans. We are similar in anatomy and physiology, reproduction, development, immunology, genetics, cognition, and social complexity. Basically what all this means is that Reese's monkeys are very useful for medical research. The captured monkeys were being sold to biomedical research companies. One trapper alone caught and sold over 700 monkeys. When this was brought to the spotlight, many people were shocked and outraged, including some animal rights groups. Due to the public outrage caused by the trapped monkeys ending up in research facilities, the authorities stopped issuing permits in 2012. Since then, there hasn't been any action taken to stop the monkey increase. But hey, what's the harm in having a few monkeys around? About 25 to 30 percent of the monkeys carry herpes B. When transferred to humans, herpes B can cause severe brain damage and even death. Though the chances of herpes B being transferred from monkey to human are quite low, the consequences are quite high. In general, monkeys aren't very aggressive though. There have been a few incidents where the park had to shut down when monkeys charged at people, but usually people regard seeing the monkeys as a positive experience. 
The monkeys are a major tourist attraction in the park, and many visitors come to the park specifically to see them. This may be leading to them becoming more habituated over time, as they become more used to being around humans. It also probably doesn't help that people have been giving the monkeys food, despite the fact that feeding monkeys in the park has been illegal since 2018. Again, the risk of transfer is low, and a monkey would need to scratch or bite a person, or a fluid from an infected monkey would need to enter the eyes, nose, mouth, or bloodstream. It's not very likely to happen, but with increasing contact with humans, the chances will only rise. Returning to the tourism element though, there are many people who don't want the monkeys to be removed. Their numbers will keep increasing though. It is estimated that by 2022 there will be about 400 monkeys living in the park. People might argue that the threat to humans is relatively low, and many animals in Florida present a potential threat to humans. The monkeys aren't native though, and possibly could harm the environment killing birds, destroying mangrove trees, and polluting the water. It's not exactly clear what should be done. Should the monkeys be left? Should they be removed? And if they are removed, what should be done with them? What would you do if you were in charge?